Dr. Kenny, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. John Adams knew that facts are stubborn things. In this district, facts are hidden under the mantle of office. They get used as tools or weapons, but they wait for us. We must seek them with the lamp of truth and put them into words. But you and I speak different languages in this republic. You speak the language of power, of pen, purse, and gavel. I speak American grassroots, the language of liberty through providence, property, and civic virtue. We seldom speak together about the rule of law unless it is ignored or violated. Now is such a time. I have a story that bridges the distance between my state of California and this capital. What I say here must be said here. Pilgrims brought to this continent a lamp of liberty, guided here by the pursuit of life within the words of Moses and Christ. They persevered for righteous freedom. We sit here in the shadows of Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. We visit here memorials to those who failed in service to this country. They persevered for righteous power. The spirit of patriots living and dead grants me the right to be here. It is my duty as an American citizen to speak here today. In October 2010, the San Fernando Valley Patriots, a not-for-profit corporation in California, applied with the Internal Revenue Service for a 501c4 status as a tax-exempt social welfare organization. We were then and remain a Tea Party group affiliated with the National Tea Party Patriots. We heard nothing until February 2012 when I received a packet from the IRS exempt organization's office in Cincinnati, Ohio which included a questionnaire with 35 items divided into 80 subpoints of inquiry. A cover letter indicated that we had 20 days to comply without penalty, including penalties of perjury, for failure to answer all questions with facts that are true, correct, and complete. Generally, the questions were a demand that read like the chilling words from the 1950s, are you now or have you ever been? The IRS sought documentation of our meetings, rallies, events, or candidate forums. That included video and audio transcriptions, notes, copies of all handouts, the political parties of speakers, and an issues list. The IRS sought identifying information on employees, data on volunteers and members, plus employer identification numbers on businesses with which we associate. These are our donors. They have names. Mike, the printer, who gave us a discount on handbills. Dee, the beauty consultant, who donated posters for our tax day rallies and Greg, the electrician, who made a stand for our 9-11 banner out of pipes and wires. The IRS sought EINs and details on our association with tax-exempt organizations. These are our teachers. They have names. The Heritage Foundation, Freedom Works, and the National Center for Constitutional Studies, where we learn American history. The Tea Party Patriots, where we learn grassroots skills. And the West Valley Food Pantry, our charity. The IRS sought details of communications with our legislators. Even in Southern California, that is protected free speech. My personal favorite was question number 33, which in relation to protests asked for a listing of our, quote, committed violations of local ordinances, breaches of public order, or arrests, then requested details on how we conduct or promote illegal activities. I think the IRS needs to fix its labeling machine. We're the San Fernando Valley Patriots, not Occupy Oakland. I stopped the costly and exhausting IRS process in July 2012. We survive on my credit card and donations in our cake tin. Like patriots before us, we persevere. The voice of the Republic resides in our citizens, not in the tongue of government. More must grasp that self-evident truth. This dialogue is about the jackboot of tyranny upon the field of our founding documents. To whisper the letters IRS strikes a shrill note on Main Street, USA. But when this behemoth tramples upon America's grassroots, few hear the snapping sounds. Now more people listen, but few who know the truth speak. This moment reflects the reality of governance in America. This time we came to you. In time, you will come home to us. This time we came for truth. In time, the lies will fall. Vox Populi, Vox Dei, the voice of the people is the voice of God, is irresistible but different in America. Our voice belongs to the free individual, not to the collective mob. Our voice is best heard when power kneels, then whispers to liberty, strength. 
and when liberty stands under heaven and shouts to power, freedom.